Mom, now that we have an idea about how and what are cells, I have a doubt in mind. Ask me whatever you want to. I was thinking if all the cells are of same size and shape. Oh Dhruv, how can all cells be of the same shape and size? As there are millions of cells present in different living organisms, they are different in several aspects when compared to each other. There are several organisms like Paramecium, Amoeba, Spirogyra and Chlamydomonas which have a single cell or are made up of a single cell only and are called as unicellular organisms. The term uni refers to single. Through the most amazing part here is that these organisms are made only from a single cell and all the processes that are required for living like breathing, obtaining and consuming food, growth, movement, excretion and reproduction are all carried out by the single cell only. There are some plants, animals and microbes that are made up of only a single cell. Such types of organisms are called unicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms can be found everywhere. Like plants like diatoms and yeasts, animals like protozoa and microbes like bacteria. This implies that all the other living organisms are multicellular. Very true. They have many cells of similar or dissimilar types in their body structure. In simple words, they are made up of many cells. So they are called multicellular organisms. Most life that can be seen with the naked eye is multicellular as are all animals and plants. How do the unicellular organisms perform all the necessary functions? A single celled organism performs all the necessary functions that multicellular organisms perform. But how? The single cell in organisms like amoeba is built in such a way that it performs all its vital activities like reproduction, locomotion, digestion and so on. I just can't believe this. But how does a single cell perform all the activities? Well, take the amoeba for example. Amoeba uses small finger-like projections called pseudopodia for locomotion and to capture prey. Cells with these structures are called amoeboid. Pseudopodia means false feet. Pseudopods or pseudopodia are temporary projections, eukaryotic cells. An amoeba engulfs the prey with its pseudopodia and then digests it. Thus, it uses these small projections for locomotion and to capture prey. What about in a multicellular organism? Similar functions in multicellular organisms are carried out by groups of specialized similar kinds of cells together forming different tissues. Tissues aggregate to form organs. Organs aggregate to form an organ system. Like epithelial, muscular and granular are some of the tissues that form parts in the organ. Organs like the stomach and the intestine in turn form the digestive system. Many organ systems together form an organism. For example, the bodies of human beings consist of digestive system, excretory system, respiratory system and lymphatic system. Is a compound microscope a perfect tool for the study of cells? Yes, but there are some cells that cannot be seen even through a compound microscope. Then how will we see it? Then an electron microscope is used. Electron microscope? When you suffer from cough or cold, you consult a doctor, isn't it? Yes.
The doctor tells you that it is because of a viral infection. These viruses are very small and can be seen only under an electron microscope. Why an electron microscope? There are two types of electron microscope, namely scanning electron microscope SEM and transmission electron microscope TEM. What is the difference? Scanning electron microscopes are used to examine the external parts of various organisms. It is a type of electron microscope that images a sample by scanning it with the high energy beam of electrons in a faster scan pattern. The electrons interact with the atoms that make up the sample, producing signals that contain information about the sample's surface topography. Composition and other properties such as electrical conductivity. The surface structure of microorganisms like bacteria can be observed through a scanning electron microscope. The transmission electron microscope is used to view cells in further detail. For example, the internal structure of a cell, like the structure of the cell organelles, can be viewed using this microscope. I see. And what about the transmission electron microscope? The transmission electron microscope, TEM, is used to view the internal structure of a cell and its organelles. TEM is a microscopy technique in which a beam of electrons is transmitted through an ultra-thin specimen, interacting with the specimen as it passes through it. An image is formed from the interaction of the electrons transmitted through the specimen. The image is magnified and focused onto an imaging device, such as a fluorescent screen on a layer of photographic film, or to be detected by a sensor, such as a CCD camera. A very valuable piece of information. Exactly. But using an electron microscope, it is possible to magnify the cells to view a larger image. It can enlarge an image to billion times. This helps in noticing any irregularities in the cells. Mom, what is the shape of cell? The onion root tip shows presence the cells are compact, attached to each other. The leaf section of mustard or maize shows presence of loosely arranged cells and the peels of royal leaf shows presence of small openings also. Does this mean that cells have different shapes and sizes? Yes, the size and shape of cells is not the same. Some are circular, rectangular, some are bean shaped, some are columnar and while angular. Why do cells have different shapes? Shapes of cells are often related to the function it performs. But mom, amoeba seems to have no real shape at all. As I told you earlier, shape of cells are related to the function it performs. Cells can be spherical, round, elongated, pointed and even branched. For example, a nerve cell or neuron is long and branched. The branched structure of a neuron helps it to conduct messages to all parts of the body, to the brain and vice versa. The white blood corpuscle WBC is the only animal cell that changes its shape. Why? What do white blood cells do? The white blood corpuscle WBC is the only animal cell that changes its shape. WBCs are responsible for protecting our bodies against invading bacteria and harmful microorganisms like pathogens. To find invading bacteria, they travel along with blood in blood vessels. Whenever they find invading bacteria, they squeeze through the blood vessels and intercellular spaces, catch the bacteria and kill it. 
To perform this task, WBCs change their shape using pseudopodia, similar to those in an amoeba. What about the RBC? Red blood cells RBCs in our bodies are circular and biconcave circulating in blood. The primary function of RBCs is to carry oxygen from the lungs to various tissues of the body. These cells also carry the waste carbon dioxide from various tissues to the lungs till that it can be exhaled through the nostrils. Another example of a different cell shape is found in muscle cells. Muscle cells are spindle shaped. Which part of the cell gives it shape? Components of the cell are enclosed in a membrane. This membrane provides shape to the cells of plants and animals. Cell wall is an additional covering over the cell membrane in plant cells. It gives shape and rigidity to these cells. Do you know that even bacterial cell also has a cell wall? Interesting! Yes, indeed. But how big or small is a cell? An egg or an amoeba are both single-celled. Yeah. The size of the cell varies greatly between 0.1 micrometer to 18 centimeter. Wow! Most of the cells is microscopic in size and is not visible to the unaided eye. Are the cells in an elephant larger than the cells in a rat? The size of the cells has no relation with the size of the body of the animal or plant. It is not necessary that the cells in the elephant be much bigger than those in a rat. Is the size of cell related to the function of the cell? Yes, the size and shape of a cell both depend on the function of the cell. But I'll give you an example. The nerve cells in a hippopotamus are very similar to those in a rat's body. In both cases, the nerve cells are long and branched and are involved in the transmission of messages. Are there cells that can be seen with the naked eye? Yes. Well, one is a hen's egg. It is a single cell. Oh, but I never knew it was a single cell. The largest cell is the egg of an ostrich, which measures 170 mm by 130 mm. At the other end of the range, the tiniest cell is the bacterial cell that measures 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers. That's great! Wow, mom! I never knew that a single cell could multitask so many different things all by itself. Well, it was really nice to know about unicellular organisms from you in such an easy and interesting way. Thank you, Mom. Come on, Dhruv. It was my pleasure to explain all this to you.